After 39 years on the police force, Chief Howard Williams says it's now simply time to go. Today's college students may be marked by the digital era, but for some students when it comes to studying, nothing beats an old-fashioned textbook. This year, over 4,000 students are painting fences, picking weeds, and more at sites just like this one. If you're thinking about dropping a class, time is running out. The deadline to drop classes for the spring semester is tomorrow at 5 o'clock in order to receive a W. It's a year of hard work and planning. Well, basically we start off by uh, talking to sponsors and going out and getting people to donate like their food, their time, or their money. For a day of service. I'm so excited about it because this gives the students here at Texas State an opportunity to go out into the, into the community and help out any way that we can. And a lot of fun. It feels amazing to get all this ready. It's just great. You see all the people, you see all their energy, you see people just dancing. Just people ready to go out to the sites and perform service work. The 12th annual Bobcat Build was one for the records. It was the biggest since the initiative started in 2002 with over 200 job sites. This year, over 4,000 students are painting fences, picking weeds, and more at sites just like this one. Students have been working on this all year. It's, this is one of the biggest service projects in the country, and I'm very proud of our students for this. Representative Lloyd Doggett even made an appearance and encouraged Thank you students. Very much. There's nothing small about Texas State and nothing small about the way that Bobcats volunteer. Bobcat Build is completely student run. The event is organized by about 40 students on a planning committee. Bobcat Build is great for the community because we're giving back. You know, a lot of people see like students coming in and they're like, ah, oh, more students. You know, they're taking my parking space, but this gives them a time to be happy about us. For Bobcat Update, I'm Megan Carthel. Today's college students may be marked by the digital era, but for some students when it comes to studying, nothing beats an old-fashioned textbook. A study published by College and Research Libraries found students engaged in more responsive reading habits, such as highlighting, underlining, and annotating when reading a printed text. Just because, like, I like holding something tangibly and then flipping through the pages and highlighting and all that stuff and it's harder to do that on the computer. I think I use the, a tangible source more than online, usually because it's just easier to follow, I think, than on a computer screen. Although most students in this study preferred printed text, the Pew Research Institute found a growing number are turning to ebooks. In 2011, when the most recent data was gathered, 15% of students said they preferred ebooks over printed ones. Because you don't have like a stack of papers to file through, you just go online, scroll down. According to the study, students between the ages of 18 and 21 were more likely to use e-text if they are easier to access or when the printed version is not available. The study also found students were more likely to skim when reading on a computer or mobile device, reading quicker and less in depth. For Bobcat Update, I'm Megan Carthel. After 39 years on the police force, Chief Howard Williams says it's now simply time to go. It's, it's been great fun. It has been a blast. Williams, a graduate of Texas State, joined the San Marcos Police Department in July 2003 and guided the department through a period of growth. He's also written three books in police sciences. And always do the right thing for the right reason and just let the chips fall where they may. Everything will be okay. Williams says he's looking forward to spending more time with his wife and spoiling his grandchildren. All the cold dinners that I came home late for and the missed family events and the three o'clock phone calls that wake us up. Uh, I kind of owe her big. It's about time to start making it back up to her. Chief Williams, lovingly called Howie by friends and co-workers, will be remembered by his great work within the community. sense of needing to connect to community has been important uh, with him and I, and I think that filters down to the officers. It's about doing what's right for the citizens that we serve. He does have a lot of charisma. He has a great personality, and he does truly love his profession. I mean, he's been in it for a very long time, and he's very good at what he does. He's a brilliant man. Williams says he loves his line of work because of the satisfaction it brings him. To be the first one to get your hand on someone who abused a child or robbed a bank or raped a woman, for you to be the first one to grab that guy and say, I'm calling you to task for what you've done. You're, you're going to answer for this, and I'm going to see to it that you do. Uh, it's just, like I said, there's a satisfaction in that that you just don't get anywhere else doing anything else. Williams' last day as chief will be <laughs> August 1st. Life has been good. What can I say? For Bobcat Update, I'm Megan Carthel. 
Chocolate might be used to cure a sweet tooth, but in a new study, many doctors think the sweet sensation could potentially help your heart. However, you won't be eating chocolate bars, but pills, packed with cocoa bean compounds called flavanols. These flavanols found in dark chocolate are believed to lower the risk of heart attacks and strokes. And don't worry, these pills don't have all the fat and sugar in chocolate.